sometimes just a change in perspective is all we need to open up a new line of thought, open up ideas that weren't necessarily available to us before. Now, the map that you're looking at probably has some of you confused. It's just the map of North and South America turned 90 degrees. But when you look at it like this and you look at it long enough, you stop seeing the us and them division, the North versus South division. And you see basically two pieces of land with some water in between and some islands. There is something going on in Venezuela that I think many people in North America need to know. In fact, everyone in North America needs to know about this because it sets contrast between the reality and what DC is telling you is going on in Venezuela. Now, I'm only going to use two articles today, two articles and a series of pictures to illustrate how completely skewed the narrative is coming out of D.C. Here's the main article that we're going to talk about. Venezuelan food houses, a last trench against the U.S. blockade. Now, this is a story off of Venezuelan analysis that talks about neighbors, houses, people's houses and homes, standing up and becoming sources of People preparing food for large groups of people. That's all that goes on in these houses. And the people bring their own containers, and these women spend their days making huge batches of some of the most delicious food you've ever had in your life. And then they dole it out and give it to their neighbors. And this is financed by local government programs. This is the evidence of what I have been saying for a long time, everyone who hears the DC narrative thinks, oh, evil, terrible, top-down, government-controlled socialism, terrible. That is not what's going on in Venezuela that DC doesn't like. What DC doesn't like is popular power, meaning grassroots up socialism, meaning that the local authorities, the local people have the, have greater power than the government, the controlling government does. In fact, the vice president of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, came out and said, look, tell us what you need from us financially. Tell us your plan, and we will help you fix your plan. We're not going to give you a plan. We'll give you the money, but we're not going to give you the plan. This is what's happening. <clears throat> Food houses are one of the trenches to curb the impact of the economic situation against Venezuela. Luchadores de la Patria, meaning fighters for the homeland, is set up in the neighborhood of Caracuao, Caracas, I hope I said that right. Luisa and the cooks get up every day at dawn to guarantee food for those in need in their community. Luisa del Valle Baez wakes up every day at 4 in the morning, 77 years old, and has a Caribe strength attached to her words. She was born in Huiria, Sucre State, to the east of the country, a land with the smell of the sea, Cocoa plantations and sun. From its coastline, you can see the island of Trinidad and Tobago from where her family came from in search for work and a better life. 21 grandchildren, 12 great grandchildren, 4 great great grandchildren. Her mother's 101. And so these are the images. This is where I want to get to the images. If you had a choice after working all day between coming home and Going through a drive through grabbing a heart attack in a sack and eating it on your way home, or coming home to a table surrounded with family and friends, eating a meal that had been being prepared for the vast majority of the day, and having fellowship. Which would you choose? I think the vast majority of my audience would choose the latter. But wait a minute. The latter isn't real good for capitalism, is it? Oh, no. No, you see, if we had people going home and doing this type of things, those drive throughs would dry up. They would dry up and there would be no profit in it. And people would cry, evil, terrible, horrible socialism. 
people working together to save money, people working together to feed each other. Now, the contrast is this. U.S. to pay farmers 15 to $150 per acre from August, part of a $16 billion trade aid. The U.S. government, D.C. government, will pay American farmers between 15 and 15, 150 an acre, starting from mid to late August, as part of a $16 billion aid package to compensate those hurt by the trade war with China. So let me get this straight. It's okay to take money from some North Americans in the form of taxes and then hand it over to a whole bunch of people in a giant socialist handout because of poor government policy that treats our currency as a weapon of war. The dismal, incredibly horrible, short-sighted policies of the current administration have caused farmers to near, brought them to near collapse. And that's what we're doing. But yet we decry and deride evil, terrible, horrible socialism. Meanwhile, and where will you hear the numbers here? From Venezuela. From 2017 to date, 3,118 homes were put into operation in the country, these food homes. Each day they feed 605,628 people. This is a country of patriots. This is a country that has a three million man standing armed militia ready to defend itself. This is a country that governs itself much like we used to. See, they talk about Venezuela in this context of just one country with one overriding, controlling government from Caracas when nothing more could it's just not that way. And I'm going to come over here to Venezuela real quick. The vast majority of all of the images that you have seen out of Venezuela have come from over here near the border with Colombia. Where this woman lives is way over here in, I guess what you would call the eastern, I have it oriented weird, but over here by Trinidad and Tobago. You don't see images out of here. See, this is the story that they don't want you to hear that in a country of 30 million people, even by the most outrageous estimates out of D.C., this uh, collapse has affected maybe 3 million. Maybe. I don't think it's that many, meaning 90% of the country not affected. But that 90% of the country, D.C. doesn't want you to talk about. They don't want you to go, wait a minute, there's 30 million people there. You're saying that this giant nationwide total zombie apocalypse collapse only affect 10% of the people? Yeah, that's right. And I have people come to my comments, you're not right, Mucky. I talked to a friend who knew somebody who had a friend who knew someone from Venezuela, and they said it's terrible. Great, you know one person. Even if somebody put up a different family Every day on YouTube, let's say somebody wanted to make a video about Venezuela, and they were going to put up a family that was suffering, and they put one up every single day. Let's say they put up three a day, every single day on YouTube for the next year. How many people would that, how many families would that be? What's three times 365? That's a thousand. Out of a country of 30 million. I think some people are starting to do the math in their head about the game DC is playing. So choice. Would you rather have your day end this way or this way? Would you rather have this be what you look forward to at the end of the day or this? One is really good for capitalism and one is not. Guess which one is which? Would you rather be this, what you have to look forward to as far as personal interaction with your meal? Or would you rather have this? See, this would easily qualify in anybody's book as evil, terrible, horrible socialism. 
where people and communities get together and take care of each other with really no interest in profit motive. They don't care who's getting rich. Is everybody's got a belly full of food? Is everybody happy? Is everybody blessed? Is everybody lifted up? Has fellowship been had? When those are the goals, DC will absolutely do everything to destroy it. And they've come pretty close. They really have. If we would see our world in just a different perspective, because honestly, from this angle, this is how the people who came to this new world saw it. Because they were coming from Europe. They were coming from what we would call east to west. And so there was a landmass to off to their right, there were some islands in the middle, and there was a giant landmass off to their left. And they didn't see it as two distinct places. The people, the native peoples that they encountered in what is now modern day Venezuela and Guyana and Colombia very, very much resembled the people, the native peoples that they encountered in Florida and modern day North Carolina. Same thing in the islands, to Cuba, all the way through into Belize. They saw one nation. The layout of the nation was a little bit different than what they were used to. In some ways, it kind of resembles the Mediterranean. If you look at this area here, that's, uh, I guess, when we look at this bounded at the top by what we call Central America and bounded at the bottom by these uh Islands, Grenada, Dominica, Montserrat. When you look at this, it has generally the shape of the Mediterranean Sea. Same thing, I guess, kind of not nearly the shape-wise, but the way the land is laid out with the Gulf of Mexico. So at this time, there was really no difference in the sense that when they arrived, there were certain things that had to get taken care of. Food, water, shelter medical care, you know, there had to be some kind of a plan put together for long-term subsistence. And ironically, and I'll leave with this, when Spain came here, initially when they arrived, the initial expeditions that came to what they called La Florida, which was everything from what we call Florida all the way up to Nova Scotia, the reports back to the king were that that area was less habitable. It was just not a good place to settle. The areas farther to, I guess, what would be the south, down here, were, were much more amenable. That's why you saw much more Spanish influence earlier through South America, Central America, and in this region, because it was just more hospitable. It was uh, just easier to get through. North America was a giant pain in the ass. So, looks like history comes full circle sometimes. And we will leave that there. Thank you everyone for the support on the music. I very much appreciate it. A lot of those songs were recorded a long time ago. So, it's nice to see it being appreciated. Like, share, subscribe.